I first went to Ethiopia in the mid 80s. Coincidentally, it was just after the famine and Ethiopia was in a pretty poor state. And my everlasting memory of that first trip was visiting the Kabeles, which are villages and shacks that everybody lives in. And the alleys between these shacks were all flowing with faeces and urine. And literally babies were playing amongst it as well. And that was my introduction to Ethiopia. I thought this was a one-off trip, but I was seduced to go back again. And I thought I might be able to give some of my entrepreneurial skills, but I found the poverty was overwhelming, really. They weren't ready for entrepreneurial skills. And so I decided to start a charity for the long term. I ran it as though it was a business. And um, that meant overheads kept to nothing. We, we, we've always been accommodated in free offices. Um, we employ the minimum number of people. We just feel that we're fundraisers and um, the people on the ground are doing the job. One of the great achievements has been to help establish the Hope College of Science and Technology. The majority of the students are very poor and they're sponsored. Without Hope College, they wouldn't get a further education. One of the great things is that 50% of their students are women. It's incredibly important that women and girls have equal opportunities because they're 50% of the intellectual assets and they can't afford to be ignored or wasted. We persuaded Hope to start serving breakfast for street children. And now one of the most joyful sights for me when I visit Addis is to visit the breakfast and there'd be a hundred children having breakfast. And it's a nutritious breakfast. It's very simple. It's just a roll, a banana and a cup of wheat tea. But the joy on their faces when they see a visitor they all cheer like mad by way of thanks, and that, that's very uplifting. I suppose one of the warmest memories must be um, my relationship with Dr Hamlin, who runs the Fissile Hospital. The Fissile Hospital have been training midwives for the last few years. They come to Addis to be trained, and then they go back to their villages to practice, and this would be a, a great force for good in the fight against fistula. Because of the Fistula Hospital, we were able to open Ethiopia Aid in Australia, where Dr Hamlin has a large following. And we've now got a successful um, charity, independent charity in Australia, as we have in Canada and as we have in Ireland. Well, 30 years uh, is a long time, but in that 30 years, we've raised over £30 million. And what I feel is the impact that £30 million pounds has had on the people of Ethiopia. We must have touched hundreds of thousands of lives and changed hundreds of thousands of lives. And that's what gives me the real thrill. I just think it's fairness, really, that um, there's too much division in our own country, never mind the world. And there's um, incredibly wealthy people on one hand and incredibly poor people, unbelievably poor people on the other. And I think we should all be doing what we can to redress this. A lot of our donors, I think, have grown old with me. And um, notoriously, it's the older people that have the money to give to charities. So I think Ethiopia has benefited from that. And I'm very grateful for the loyalty that our donors have shown us. And many now are remembering us in their will, which, which is very important because direct marketing it's really not allowed anymore in the way that it was. So we've got to find new ways of raising money. And one of them that's come to us is um, bequests. As the founder of the charity, I just feel I lit the touch paper and everybody else has done the work, really. So many thanks to all the people that have worked for Ethiopia. Many thanks to the trustees that give their time willingly to manage Ethiopia. And of course, we wouldn't get anywhere without the support of the Ethiopians themselves that go the extra mile to deliver the service that we hope to.